Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for listening to our complaints. You have a job I do not envy. Uh, but we do appreciate the work you are doing in ensuring the right to safe highways, roads, parks, water quality, and working towards affordable housing. Uh, while those are all important endeavors, there is a more fundamental right that is being overlooked, and that is the right to life. Thousands of human beings will never gaze upon our beautiful beaches, never walk down Paula Fox, or appreciate the rich history of our town. Specifically, I'm referring to the thousands of human beings in Escambia County that have been poisoned, starved, chemically burned, torn and dismembered limb by limb in the violent acts of abortion. I'm requesting that you immediately adopt the resolution to make Escambia County safe for the preborn as presented to you on May 4th. As a mother of three, I have seen the beauty and the joy that comes through pregnancy and birth. Um, it was a very emotional experience for me when I heard my daughter's beating heart and when I saw my son wave at me through the ultrasound. It's an incredible experience. And yet, though equally human, the preborn child does not have equal human rights in Escambia County. One rash decision, and that child can be sentenced to the same fate as murderers and child rapists. The innocent child is given the death penalty, not for committing a horrific crime, but simply for existing. I'm very grateful that most of you have aligned yourselves with the pro-life movement. I'm requesting that you honor those commitments and that you grant equal protections under the law for all humans, including the preborn. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Stephen. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, I want to add my support to what my wife just spoke about uh, and ask you to adopt the resolution to make Escambia County safe for the unborn. Uh, why should you support this resolution? It's a simple declaration. Uh, but I would call you to remember many powerful declarations throughout our nation's history. First of all, of course, our nation was conceived in a declaration. We called out the injustices of our mother country against us, and it was through this and through the pain of war that our nation was born. Later, it was the declaration of a dream that called us to remember and make good on those incredible values contained in our founding documents that we're keeping from our fellow man. It was the peaceful but bold words of truth that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And yet I call you to remember an even more powerful declaration that, than both of these. That is the declaration of the Holy Spirit of God, who declared Jesus Christ, the Son of God with power through his rising back from the dead. For 2,000 years, we have confessed the kingship of Jesus through that little suffix, A-D, Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord. And how did our Lord come to us but by the declaration of an angel who said to the Virgin Mary, your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son. It is a child that is conceived, and children are humans. And further, the scriptures tell us, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. It was a baby in her womb, and babies are humans. That baby was named John, and he went on to declare Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Commissioners, we're asking you to declare on our behalf that life begins at conception, and that it is a human that is conceived, and that we must attribute to those humans the same rights we have recognized for all. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.